Hello everybody, welcome to a retrospective. A bit like we did with The Deadland, my old YouTube channel. Uh, I was going through some old files and I found loads and loads of animations that I never uploaded or never finished. Some things that were never completed and my first ever animation that I've actually managed to find. I used to animate is basically the key word to take away from here. Uh, and I, don't, I don't really do it anymore. Now I do I, the whole Game and Beaver thing, uh, but I still have that kind of passion for it. And I, I don't miss the days because they were freaking hard work. It's hard work no matter what you do, but I enjoy this and I, I used to enjoy animations as well. I thought what would be funny is if we sort of go back through my back catalog that I've managed to find because I'm sure there's stuff that is lost to lost to time somewhere um, of just some animations that maybe I kind of want to finish or haven't been finished and just generally have a good laugh because I think my first ever like animations are in here so oh I got a cringe show it's so hard <laughs> so let's have a look shall we right so as you can see I didn't name these very well uh, I just have one called Pokemon and it's only, it's 1.5 megabytes. I have no idea what this is. Ah, yes. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is one of my first ever animation. I think we just click through. Yeah, that's it. And then his, <laughs> his eyes disappear. And then his pupils disappear. And that's a finger. I'm pretty sure I traced that. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, it's 100% traced from that. What is dance? 2001, look at that. Wow, January 2001. When was the Caramella dancing a thing? That's when I made this. Test it, there it is. Test movie. Boom, there you have it. Look at them apples. It's freaking Caramella dancing. <laughs> so in high school, everybody had a pirated copy of Flash go around and they would just, you know, mess around with it. It wasn't until sixth form when I was about 17, 18 maybe, when I thought, oh, you know, it'd be pretty cool. I want to try Flash and maybe I want to actually animate. Maybe that's what I want to do with my life. I don't know. Uh, and But nobody had it. They're all like, oh yeah, I don't have that anymore. Like, deleted it. This is, I think, quite literally my first ever animation. Oh, it's a thing of beauty. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. I think that was probably all done on a mouse, 100%. Oh, ho, 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 yes. So you've got this that's drawn with the mouse and then this, these are just shapes. So if we click enter, oh, 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 look at it. How amazing is that? Wow. <laughs> and I think the reason why I had all these shape tweens is because I was inspired by certain people on Newgrounds. Now, I, I mean, I looked up to, you know, the, the, the amazing people I, I knew I definitely could not hold a candle to. And that was, you know, like Chris and Ego Raptor and all those at the time. Um, and I was like, yeah, they're drawing like frame by frame. I can't do that. I got a mouse. <laughs> uh, okay. Hey, hey, there's an old um, Newgrounds as well. Am I, uh, did I link that to YouTube? I must have never seen this before. I'm sexy and I know it. Ah, okay. Ah, the early internet. Oh, it was brilliant. Yep. Is that, is that actually it? Oh, no, no. Then, then we do a dance. Okay. Ooh. Oh, oh no. Oh yes. Oh wow. <laughs> what? Subscribe for more videos. <laughs> Even though this was put on new grounds. <laughs> okay. Oh yes. I remember this one. So this was back when the PlayStation 4 was coming out and I was commissioned by Machinima to make an animation uh, like on the PS4. And they, I don't think they... Uh, they might have had a, a little bit of a brief. I can't remember what it was, but it was basically just to imply that the PS4 had some new feature and it's amazing. And you can you can choose whatever you want. Like their, their channel has gone. Everything that I did for Machinima or Happy Hour no longer exists, which is interesting. <laughs> but yeah, I remember this being one of the, the first animations that I really uh, put loads of effort into uh, like the frame by frame stuff. I think it was heavily inspired by Ego Raptor and all of them. So it was, I think it was almost frame by frame, which I thought was good. I thought if, if you draw a frame or like something every frame, it's gonna look the best it can. That's not the way it goes. <laughs> it just means some things don't look too great. Oh, I was gonna say, yeah, there's loads more. Then he, then he builds his skin back and he grows. It's beautiful. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> so welcome to Squirtle Syndrome. 
One of the first animations that was a full length animation, by full length I mean it was two to three minutes. I was never really great at art, I'll be the first to admit it. <laughs> and I'm still not, it's just, you know, it's just practice. The longer you do it, the better you get. Um, so, like, I think, I get the feeling like one of these was traced. I can't remember which one, though these ones weren't. This one might have been traced for reference. Uh, I don't think War Turtle was, um, but you can see, like, quite quickly, um, I think I did this, and then I lost motivation with the project, and I started working on another one, which never saw the light of day. And that one was called Cubone Story. I get the feeling it was based on a Eurovision song. <laughs> At the time I listened, I was like, oh, that's so cool. And it was more like orchestral and stuff. And then I think I spliced it in with, uh, some Narnia soundtrack, I, I don't know, but I haven't seen this in ages. So everything inside like the square screen is what you'd be able to see. While I was trying to work on Squirrel Syndrome, I was working on this just to give myself something different. I, I wanted to test myself. So this basically was a story about how Cubone became Cubone. Because we all know Cubone wears the skull of its uh, dead mother as as a helmet, basically, in Pokemon. And I was always, I was like, ooh, I wonder what the story would be behind that. So teenage me was like, you know what? I ain't gonna animate this. So I wanted to make this like really heartfelt like animation. So it starts all cutesy. You got this like Cubone who's uh, who's eating some, I think I, I was like, that's an Auron berry. Yes. Look, it's like there's real lighting there. How crazy is that? But this Cubone's not satisfied with blueberries. It wants the red berries. <gasps> Although I kind of want to just click enter because I don't think I don't think any sound effects play, and this isn't going to be playing at the same animation speed either. So that that's the the berry in the eye there, and I think I, yep the the swallow, and then the turn around, and then looking left, and then looking right. Look at that for an environment. Oh, it doesn't have a head anymore. Is that because I? Yep, there it is. <laughs> for some odd reason, I was like, you know what? We're just gonna hide this later. I think that must have been I was some working on something later. So it's kind of like having a look, even though, yo, there you go. So there, there was the mother there. <laughs> this is me showing the footprints. <laughs> look at that walking cycle. You so can't see exactly where I've like rubbed over the, the pen lines and everything. Oh, it's so rough. The head's so small. It's beautiful. So it was tempted by the uh, the red berries. And then as I don't know what I'm trying to sh show here, like it gets darker. And I can't remember why I did that. Because really this, this was supposed to be a shadow and it never looked like a shadow. <laughs> I could have just blurred it. Even then, I knew about blurring with them um, symbols and stuff. I knew it like destroyed frame rate, but like I should have so done that. I don't know why I made it squiggly. Yeah, yeah. There's like this is supposed to be the thing, the 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 antagonist that comes. There you go. There's me frame by frame doing the shadow, and then it lands behind him. Duh, what could it be? What menacing monster? And then the shake. This was all. I think I timed it to the music as well. I can't, yeah, I think this was, this was that, that song I'm talking about. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, this was the camera angle, like a pan up. Like, oh my God, what could it be? Here's a Charizard. <laughs> oh, it's so cringy. I love it. <laughs> Running away. Oh dear. I just remember, like, I, I worked on this for so long and I was like storyboarding it out and but of course like this was my second animation so yeah, it, I think there's just something different <laughs> about the cringe in this as opposed to the cringe in like uh, the the deadline I did because there's only so much of me that I can put in the deadline because you know it's JPOG so it does all of the work for me whereas everything here I ha I made so it's like <laughs> <laughs> you had the smirk and then but so yeah that that that's a wish for you oh wow well i haven't seen this in years i don't know how far i think i got further than i did with this oh no, no, no the poor cubone and then <laughs> it missed him it goes to stamp and then the tear drops and then definitely did more i've done some digging and after sifting through, God, I mean, look, look at this. I have, I have so many hard drives. <laughs> I finally managed to find the right Cubone story. So last time we left off, 
Charizard, because I was about to end the video. <laughs> Charizard was about to stomp on little Cubone here. Okay, so there's the stomp, and I think after this was the tear fall. But I thought, why not make it even more dramatic by uh, having Charizard, a little zoom out of Charizard here. <laughs> don't even know what these nubs are, but there's supposed to be him like flashing his claws like, yeah, you like that? <laughs> And then we get the tear fall. Um, right, so this is this is all new to me. So you have the... Yeah, look at that. I thought that was just adding that whoosh made it look... I mean, maybe it did, like... Yeah, if you speed it up, it kind of works. But uh, I don't... And again, I don't know why I put, a black, like, a black filter over all of this. But hey-ho. And there's the cupid looking so sad. <laughs> And Charizard is, you know, completely happy with his life choices, apparently. Just, you know, this is gonna end this little Cubone's life. It's not like Pokemon, you know, eat pokey food or all that jazz. No, this universe, my universe, Charizard eats the other ones. Charizard's the best. And then we have it like, oh, and it's like, close the eyes. <gasps> Wadoosh, what happened? And then it's slowly revealed <gasps> Cubone was cowering on the floor, but it's unharmed. What possibly could have happened? <gasps> As Cubone opens its little eye, it sees, I don't know how it's, we're getting this perspective. And we see the mummy come to the rescue. Uh, <laughs> this is like, you know, it's, I don't even know what it was called. I love the idea that this Cubone leaves its mother for two seconds, and it, within those two seconds, it almost dies. We got Mother Appears, which is... Yeah, it's that bit of Narnia. And what, what's the final battle? So that's more of that Narnia soundtrack. What's this one? Yeah, that's the... <laughs> I can't play too much of that. No, you shall not hurt my baby. And then we get super emotional here, guys. You have you have the the emotion of the mother. The mother knows what it's stuck at. St <laughs> the mother knows that the odds are stacked up against her, so it goes into like super concentration mode as we get like more uh, more flashbacks to like happy times with the baby. Remember good times with Baba. So that you know the classic anime grip of the weapon there. No, you will not touch baby. <laughs> and then Charizard's vision's like all over the place. And eventually it sees what it's, what's inflicted said damage. And he's like, no, how dare you? And then we get like, yeah, I guess we could go frame by frame here because we can't really. And I think that is probably a trace. <laughs> you go like normal and then, yeah, I've seen, it's either a trace or yeah, I've definitely re referenced that so much. And the fire sort of blasts out and we get a crazy shake. And uh, I think the mother sort of covers its face. And then like the actual fight would have happened. But I don't think we ever got that far. Oh, no, we actually did have this bit. I think this was supposed to be the throw. Yeah, that was the last thing I did. So if you watch that, like, whew. <laughs> so back again, I was actually looking through the library and came across some of these scenes that I completely forgot. So this, I think, was supposed to follow right after, like Charizard roars and then shields her eyes and then looks back and then doesn't see Charizard anywhere. And it's, it's this sense of panic, like, Wait, where did he go? And then, like, looking around, like, the camera point of view, and then it would have turned to the side or somewhere, or maybe from above or something, and then Charizard would have been, like, a still image, like, going, scaled up towards the camera to give it the impression that he's charging towards, and it was just gonna be, like, a little blink and a tail move. And then you had this thing as well. You had, this was, it must've been from the side. Oh God. Yeah, it must've been from the side because this was supposed to be her reaction. So, and then of course some, I don't know. I, I, I maybe there's more actually. Oh, I didn't even show that one. Like more memories, like little baby Cubo when Cubone was born. Um, and then, yeah, this one as well. I completely forgot about this. Yeah, yeah, that was it. So it was supposed to be a sky, and then Charizard would fly down as if it was hit, because they, I don't know, at some point they were fighting in the sky. And then Charizard sort of falls down and comes past the camera, hence the little turn in the side of the body, and then he randomly gets claws in the last frame. More mother and Cubone there, like memories. I don't know why I didn't show all this. Oh yeah, look, he's cutie. 
<laughs> yeah, and that was like a scene like close up to the to Charizard flying in, even though the wings aren't that great. But I think we could have done better with the wings there. But then you've got like this close up shot of Charizard. So given the impression like the camera zoomed in when really I've just made it bigger. And then like a spin off towards and then flying. And that is a very potatoey looking Charizard. <laughs> but, but you can see what I was trying to do. There was, there was definitely some... Some thought there going into it, and uh, what, what am I saying? Actually, you know what? It's not so bad. It's bad in parts, but you know what? That's that's I'm pretty happy. I'm proud of my 18 year old self, I think, who, who made this. Maybe younger. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, look at that. There you go. That was yeah. You can see where I've kind of drawn like the camera shot and then close ups of other ones. I think that bottom left one is supposed to be like a shoulder barge. Like it comes in shoulder barges, Marowak from the side. I think that was supposed to be. Should just bite it and eat it, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that, I think. Yeah, that was supposed to be the next scene, like a, a headboard. <laughs> I went back to revisit this project where I knew that this this had more potential to quote unquote go viral um, because it was more funny rather than like a silent piece that had nothing going on except for, you know, the story. Um, so I ended up just continuing with this. Yeah, there's some... There's some oh, did, I don't even remember that shot. Did I cut this shot? Oh my god, I think I might have cut this. <gasps> yes, I think I cut this shot. I completely forgot. I spent loads of time, you know, at the time animating this. And then I decided to chuck it all out because I just, I think I just stuck with this or I, I zoomed in on the Blastoise or something. I can't remember. This is actually the Facecam Sunday's intro that I've played uh, every now and again. This is what it was for. This was a university project. It was like we had a D&D &D brief. You could do a couple of things. And one of them, I think, was uh, like a, a story of life or a part of your life. Or you could make it like a story time. Basically, story time animation before story time animation was really a thing. And we'll go frame by frame because I can't remember for the life of me what, what I was saying here. I think this was my struggle to try and find what I wanted to do. Um... And I think, yeah, something about cats. I don't know what that's about. I think that's about internet because early internet was filled with cat memes. You had like lolcats.com. If people, there's kids watching who don't even know what lolcats is. Oh, it's it's crazy. So this I made when Jellopocalypse was a thing. We did like welcome to DeviantArt or welcome to Tumblr animations. And they were very like squat characters, very basic. But I, I love the art style. It's like, that's so basic. That's so simple. Not basic. It's so simple. And it takes no time. I love it. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, so I was like, oh, I always like drawing or something like that, but I was never any good at it, I think. So I got frustrated, and then it wasn't until later that I decided, no, actually, let's be patient. I think I, I was annoyed with myself, and this is in general, as, as narrating what I remember this being, but I was annoyed with myself that I couldn't pick something up and it be exactly how I wanted it or exactly how I imagined it. I think a lot of people go through that. Like it's whether you're learning a language or learning some other sort of skill, there's always that point where you're like, ah, oh, why, why am I not learning this as quick as I should be? And I think that was that. And this is uh, after I graduated uni or I don't know what happened here. This is, I made this way before I graduated or anything like that. And this, this is brilliant. This, this character over here is supposed to be my lecturer. Long story short, everybody was supposed to bring in a um, reference for their, the, what they were going to transform. Uh, so an artist or a, a book or something like that. Whereas me, still coming from high school and sixth form and basically, you know, not trying in school or education. I think a lot of people can relate. Um, I winged it. And I, I just went into the lecture in front of all, all my classmates and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I, it's going to be like a, a pine cone that falls from a tree and then it morphs into a traffic cone and lands on, on the street. And not only that, but I, I had some other ideas, but they were equally as like cheesy and been done a million times to death and in front of everybody my lecturer just turned to me and went you know those are probably the worst ideas i've ever heard <laughs> i just remember the audible gasp from from the whole class like <gasps> i remember just standing there going like just in the cold sweat going over me thinking oh no <laughs> um so i mean that's what that was i have no idea what this is about i never did singing i never did voice acting so i don't know what i was talking about here um or maybe i couldn't maybe that's it i i couldn't i didn't think my voice was my voice is my voice however it's my bread and butter now with gaming which is interesting uh so i think i had so many record lines and stuff and 
That's me working, uh, deadlines on scripts and things like that. I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, and then I'll take on the, the, the grade snake and get my A. <laughs> I don't know what that was about either. And a pie. Of course, no idea what that's about either. And YouTube? I have no idea what I, what I did about YouTube here. I don't know. I have no idea. I know what this one is though, because as soon as I started posting animations to YouTube, if it was a Pokemon animation or if it was a Dragon Ball animation, no matter what it was, I deliberately went for something that had a fan base. And then I would go on Facebook, not that I don't think people would do this anymore, and I would join every group I could, follow every page I could to do with that, Pokemon or Dragon Ball or whatever, and I would just send them my animation and be like, hey, would you mind posting this? I, I've worked really hard, and he did that. The grind was unreal. Something that I don't think you could do nowadays. I, I, the groups, groups still exist, and I think pages do, but not like they did like in the early 2000s, definitely not. Yep, and there's me putting on Vimeo, Newgrounds, YouTube, just just trying to see what kind of worked, I think. And then this must have been me uh, doing commissions, I think. I, uh, that's like Machinima or some sort of company. Uh, they got loads of money, but I was like, yeah, what do you want? <laughs> and then I, f I got my first ever 20,000 subscribers, <laughs> which was a lot back then. And that was on my Beaver Media channel as well. Like for me, that was a lot. <laughs> I think I'm saying that. And then I signed a deal with Machinima. I think, yeah, the other, I don't know who the other person was. So my first jobs were doing commissions online, like drawing things, uh, people who wanted YouTube thumbnails. Uh, and then eventually I signed a contract with Machinima to actually make money from my animations. And then this is me playing games with Whitney. Um, but then I'm, I'm thinking, oh, my goals are so hard to reach and they're so far away. I'll never be able to get to them. <laughs> Something like that. I'm like, hmm, how, how can I achieve these goals? Oh, well, I guess I'll just do YouTube then. Yeah, there it is, YouTube with cats. And then I got 500,000 views, wow! <laughs> Which is crazy, because you get, like, some people just upload a video. Within an hour, it gets 500,000 views. Oh, man, it has changed so much. And then, Pokey Shorts 4! So that by the end of this animation, my, my, my style had completely changed. And you'll see it here. So you had, like... A pan down from a sun, then you had a Pikachu run to a shell, and then you had Brock. It was basically all about Brock telling like really terrible puns. And then like Pikachu sniffs a shell, and then a tentacle comes out, grabs Pikachu. Brock tells a joke. And this bit was Ash's reaction to the joke, I think, and then realizing that Pikachu would be grabbed by a tentacle. And thus, they ended up having to go to a Pokemon Center. So it started with Pikachu being dragged along, and then it zoomed out to Ash, like, pulling Pikachu along. Then they find the Pokemon Center. You ready for this amazing comedy? Ready? It says Center. Oh, Furnace! Like, yeah, Pikachu's facing the wrong way as Ash walks away, so he turns around all dazed, and then he gets squished by the doors. <laughs> Oh, that doesn't look too bad, actually. Yeah. I think this was one of the last scenes I sketched. That's why it's not so bad, actually. A joke with Brock being Nurse Joy and would say another pun. He's, like, trying to hold in his laughter. Yeah, there's two sketches of him coming over. Hey, look, a Game Grumps reference. Ha <laughs> ha! But Ash sets a bear trap. I think he's trying to catch an Ursa Ring because Ursa Ring is a bear, right? Yeah, makes sense. So he sort of gets up. And then the bush sort of makes a noise. And then Brock, like, psh, him over. And of course, we've got Oni. Oni, Oni face. Love throwing in these, like, one frame joke things. <laughs> but yeah, I, I spent so long on this. And it, it took so much time. And then it never saw the light of day at all. So Ash turns around. And Brock's like, do you know what your favorite game is, Ash? <laughs> And he's just like, goes, peekaboo, and scares Ash. And then Ash gets his, like, leg completely trapped. And hopefully, maybe we can hear Tom. Ah, there you go. So he screeches, and Brock is sad broccoli. Just, it seemed to be the humor was just randomly to cut to, like, things looking weird. And it was like, ha, funny, without any rhyme or reason. It just, it was definitely the time. And Ursaring, yeah, and Ursaring was going to, like, come out of the woods at this point because he'd obviously alerted uh, like the bear to him. And then he was, oh, hold on, we need another one. Wait. Ah! There you go. <laughs> and the bear sort of came over and grabbed him. And then right after, Block's like, oh my God, I can't believe that just happened. Like, as he watches him being taken away. It's like, oh. And then the joke, are you ready for it? 
unbearable. <laughs> oh, and then, yeah, I made this for, like, the Brock rap. And then I was commissioned by Animeme to do the Harlem Shake. Remember that old gem? Yeah, Harlem Shake. Uh, so I had already animated this, and I thought, oh, I'll just shove that in. Why not? <laughs> Saves time. I made the bear. Did the bear do anything? <laughs> okay, the bear apparently did that. And uh, yeah, these are Pokemon dailies. So I drew a new Pokemon every day. At least I tried to. I think it took weekends off. And this one was the last uh, animation I did before I think I really stopped everything because I was working on multiple projects and when I would get bored on one, I would just go to the other. But when I was still working on this, I was also working on, you know, the channel now, The Gaming Beaver. And it came to the point where I was like, ah, I really like this, but I've actually got a chance with this really popping off, like the Game and Beaver actually being a thing. And I chose the Game Beaver, which was obviously the worst decision I've ever made. This was my magnum opus. <laughs> um, and it's it's about Oddworld, so if you, if you know anything about Oddworld, because of course we've got to we've got to have some sort of fan base. We've got to leech off. <laughs> we can't have our own animation speak for themselves. That would be stupid. In Oddworld lore, there's supposed to be Meechers, but they're all extinct. So I thought what would be really cool is to actually like animate one. So I drew over and over each frame, even a part of a body, if it didn't move like these freaking handy things. I should probably mention that these backgrounds, like these are amazing things, uh, were made by the same person who did the Game of Beaver logo, Man Ramos. Um, and the reason why I chose him to do the Game Beaver logo was because I was working on this background and he was doing such a great job with everything he was sending to me. I was like, well, I've kind of got this like sm like small side project that I'm thinking about maybe doing if animation doesn't work out. I kind of need like a placeholder thumbnail. Would you mind just drawing a beaver? <laughs> and then he's the one that chose the colors. He's the one that completely designed it. And because of him, we got stuff like this, and it's all because I went into I wanted to do animation, and then I decided to do this Oddworld one, and I was working with him on it, and boom, there you go, Game of Beaver was founded. Anyway, it stays on frame for about like 20 seconds before it gets, uh, yep, and there you go, in comes Abe, and steps on him, and Abe's a running, look at him go! What's he running from? I don't know, we're about to find out, there you go, there's some scraps, woohoo! Yeah, these took so long. To, uh, to animate, and actually it's running really slow. <laughs> like super slow. It's probably because we got like, we're recording this at the same time as well, no doubt. And he's supposed to jump up the ledge and then get away. And that would, in the game, that's it. That's the end, you, you've, you've escaped the scrabs. But then in this comedy sketch, the scrabs actually start talking to Abe, like tell him off for being, what'd you call it? For being a coward and not, you know, facing them like a, like a proper man or something like that. And then they get like their feelings hurt. Because, like, look, we can't even... It's not fair. We've only got legs. We don't have arms or something like that. And he's like, oh, I don't know. And then, I don't know. So, so, something happens and they blame each other or one blames the other one. And uh, I think Abe decides to, you know, oh, you know what? I didn't mean it. You know, it wasn't like they weren't chasing him, like, to kill him. They were, like, looking for a friend. He's like... Oh, you know, I, I don't know. He comes down and then the scrap turns and he's like, Ha, ah, you fool! And like stabs him in the shoulder and stabs him in the shoulder and then pushes him off the cliff. He's like, ha ha, you should never trust scrap. And then we have a far-fetched. But the amount of time that I had spent on every single frame on this run cycle was ridiculous. <laughs> like normally when it comes to this, you have a full team. Like one draws like the sketch and then one does the line. One does the color. Maybe another one does the shadow. So you really pump it out. I got about six or seven images done in a day. Because it was, not only was it the sketches that I had to do, but then I would also, you know, do the line art and all of this. Really, I was making myself too much work. So much so that, you know, I didn't finish it. Because if I had just foregone the shape, the, like the shadow or whatever, like especially on the scrubs, I think it wasn't too bad because I just duplicated this. But in, you can kind of see I wanted this guy to look a bit different, so I gave him more of a, a meaty jaw. Because he was supposed to, you know, when they talked to each other, they weren't supposed to look the same. If you pause a Disney film or a Nickelodeon, like, cartoon, you'll find the mid-frame, which will be this eye that's looking really weird. However, no matter what the, the motion was I did for this, I just decided to go completely over the top with every, every frame. Like, I, <laughs> I don't know why I did this. 
But for some reason, I decided... I mean, you can get magnifying glass. Can we go even closer? We can go even closer. I put, like, stuff you wouldn't even see. Like, I put highlights and shadow on, on like, you know, the inside of the eyes. Like, his motions pulling them. But you're not even going to see that. But I don't know what I was doing. I was just making too, way too much work for myself. And then we go from that to that, which makes no sense. <laughs> and, like, you go from super blurry, speedy action which is technically not even blurred. It's high detail, non-blurred, uh, to no motion. <laughs> Welcome to what happens when you get bored. You make goats shoot guns. And there's another goat shooting a gun. I can't remember. I think this was going to be um, Call of Duty goats. Ha <laughs> ha! Go to bomb! <laughs> yeah, it was supposed to be a play on uh, ghosts, because I think Call of Duty ghosts just came out, and I was like, wouldn't it be so funny? Instead of ghosts, it's like, Call of Duty goats. Bah. Yeah, look, there's the goat bomb. There you go. It's supposed to go whoop and open and release the bomb. And then you'd follow the bomb as it like fell down on the goats that are shooting. So there you have it. A little trip down good old memory lane with some animations. But I hope you've enjoyed that video. Maybe we'll do another one. Like I said, if I can get that laptop working. But if you have, leave a like. And until next time, I'll see you cuties later. Oh, bye bye <laughs>